What's going on, guys? So, uh, first off, appreciate all the fans who came out for Fan Fest last night. That was a great experience for our players. It was, it was a much needed learning experience for our players as well in terms of the communication on the field, you know, managing the atmosphere that comes up throughout the game. Uh, it'll be a lesson that we can tie into this week's you know, preseason game against the Jets, but something we have to build on day in, day out, leading into the regular season as well. Uh, that being said, you know, today's going to be more of a recovery day for our players, back them off after three hard days. Uh, we're going to do more of a situational walkthrough, getting ready for playing you know, all the end-of-game situations and some other things that may come up. Uh, tomorrow we'll transition a little bit more back into a practice, a little bit lighter than what we've had earlier in the week, and then we'll get ready for the game on Saturday. Uh, so any questions I can answer at this point, I'd be happy to. You mentioned uh, Saturday you're approaching as like the as if it would be like the final preseason game in past years. What what does that mean in terms of the offensive line? Because I know you're a little light on numbers with some guys banged up. So what, would guys that maybe are you know projected to start or whatever could they get some snaps on Saturday and things like? That? Yeah. So right now we haven't talked to the players about who you know will be in the game, won't be in the game, and the amount of plays. So I'm not going to go into kind of a you know specific on each player. Uh, we expect the majority of our players to play. There's a couple guys we've decided for one reason or another, all different reasons uh, that won't participate in this game. Uh, but we'll talk to the players later today and make sure they're notified. Do you believe in getting Daniel? Yeah, I, so I haven't told him yet, but no, he will not play. So I'll go ahead and answer that and just put that aside so it's not like I'm sitting here trying to be coy. But Daniel will not play in this game. What do you want to see from Mike then? I want to go out there, function, and see the efficiency of the offense. You know, to me, the quarterback's role is always to make sure that the offense operates the way it should, to keep everyone on the same page. And, you know, just see him consistently improve. One thing, as I've seen, is, is Mike's consistently took a step forward every day. I'm pleased with the way he's managing the offense. You know, the more experience he has, you know, with Jason calling plays in the year and playing with our players, you know, obviously he's had a short-term, you know, window of that from, you know, light spring and being in training camp for, you know, call it three weeks now. So, you know, the more experience we can get together on the field, the better. Is there, is there a responsibility for a veteran backup quarterback to, especially at this time of year, to sort of give the guys who are being evaluated, the younger guys, their best – their best showing in these situations? I mean, really, it's everyone's responsibility. And we look at it from the standpoint of when you're trying to evaluate everybody, you want everyone to be out there and be able to function. So if you're trying to evaluate a receiver, the offensive line, you know, blocking for the quarterback, give them time for them to get open. You're trying to evaluate a running back, you know, whether that be the receivers getting in, blocking the safeties, you know, cutting off the corners, whatever it is. Everyone's got to function as a team. So, you know, you do consider that in terms of, you know, when you put certain players together, of who's had a little chemistry together in practice or, you know, maybe certain units that haven't clicked quite yet, and you want to make sure that you kind of keep ourselves out of a position where you can't evaluate everyone properly on the field. The ultimate goal is to evaluate our players. Joe, with only three preseason games, do the key workouts become the, the joint practices and the middle uh, preseason game? Well, again, I've said before, there's no replication for a game. You know, any experience these players can get in the game itself is critical getting into the season, not only for their mental preparation, but also physically getting ready for the flow of the game, the hits you're going to take. In these joint practices, you don't do a lot of live tackling. Okay, so in the games, obviously, every play ends with some kind of a tackle normally. So the game itself is critical for them to be prepared physically, mentally. But in terms of the joint practices, it is definitely a key part of our preparation. And obviously, next week we're in Cleveland. After that, we'll be in New England. Both will be uh, unique in their own experiences in terms of what we're going to focus on with the other team. Uh, but both will be critical for us. Where, where has Andrew Thomas made the biggest gains from a year ago, let's say, or even from the start of this camp? Well, I think experience carries over in terms of it's not all brand new. And obviously last year, you know, going through training camp, he didn't have the luxury of having preseason games and then a full season of games ahead of him. So the things he learned last year on the field are definitely something he can bring over to experience this year. You know, that being said, I mean, we're in a position with all of our players right now. we got to keep on harping fundamentals and consistently improving and get them in shape to play for 60 minutes on the field. But in terms of overall awareness and expectation of what, you know, the different schemes and how personnel is used different in the league, I think that's something you've got to go ahead and go through a season to truly understand. We talk to our players all the time. It's really a people league. It's about the players on the other team, the coaches, and how they call the games to understand how the different pieces are being used. So, you know, having exposure from different teams, different schemes, that's obviously built on all of our linemen. Andrew, Matt, those other young guys, last year Shane, that went out there and played. Joe, in terms of a dress rehearsal game, you know, for the starters, for the frontline guys, should we expect to see that maybe in the third preseason game, two weeks before the regular season? So, look, everything's subject to change based on where our team is. But right now our plan is to go into the New England game and treat that as the traditional game three where we play, you know, more of a full half. With At that point, you know, the units that have kind of established themselves and pushed on forward, nothing will be final at that point. Uh, but it will be an opportunity at that point to go ahead and, you know, get those guys together for an extended period of time. You know, you've said, like many times, you're an old school kind of guy. but. The way you manage guys' workloads seems sort of new school. I'm just curious like, how you came up with the philosophy of how you handle that with uh, guys' workloads out here in camp. 
We're always trying to do what's best for our players. So in terms of managing players, you know, we have new information now. We have ability to track what you know players are doing physically. We have an ability to understand what their past workloads have been, how their bodies respond in the past while we're trying to build them up. We try to use all of our experiences and, and information to make the best decision for our players. So in terms of being old school, I don't think it has anything with, you know, with what we use now to make the best decisions for them. I don't think there's anything you know, functional about just going ahead and just putting someone through something for the sake of doing it. Everything we do has a purpose. So when I talk about old school, I talk about more in my philosophy of the fundamentals of the game and how I believe the game is built and how a team has to be centered on discipline and fundamentals. Uh, in terms of using information and new tools that we have, you know, I just think it's responsibility of every coach and every organization to do the best thing for the players. How do you feel about the perception, even though you, you believe in that, that, that you run a really hard camp and you know, the guys kind of retiring kind of played into that, that narrative as well? I can't control perception on the outside. I focus more on my players on the inside, know what's in my heart, and know that I have their, their best interests at heart. Do you think you run a hard camp? I think I run a camp that's geared towards getting our players physically prepared for a season. Joe, um, Jonathan Harrison, what is he dealing with, and is it a long-term thing? And who is your center for Saturday? Because it looked like Hagee got banged up yesterday, too. Yeah, well, we got to go through some medical meetings this afternoon, see where some guys are coming out. I mean, obviously, it's been three hard days of practice, so everyone's got a nick and a bump. We'll back off in the next two days and see where we're at. In terms of that decision, that may not be made until maybe later tomorrow afternoon, Pat, based on where everyone's health is. Uh, but Brett returned to practice. He was out there, finished it for us right there. So, you know, he finished last night. We would expect our guys to get ready to play going forward. Where, where is uh, Lorenzo Carter at physically, and how – what were your impressions of him before he got hurt last year? Yeah, I love the opportunity of having Zoe on the field when we had him last year. It was unfortunate he got hurt. He's done a great job rehabbing, getting him back. We're, we're at a position now with Zoe. He's going to continue to do more and more with the team on the field. We held him out a little bit last night based on how we ramped up some of his rehab yesterday. He's going to do the walkthrough with the team today. Uh, he'll be active in practice tomorrow. I'm not going to play him in the game because of you know his specific situation of coming off the injury and where he's at physically. But I would say... You know, in terms of, you know, where he was last year and where he is this year, I think just his overall understanding of the schemes and the concepts that we operate in, his awareness of the situations, he's gotten better and better in that, and he's able to go ahead and really communicate that to the younger players who have come in. He's a high-energy guy. He's a team-first guy. He's always smiling. He's here early. He stays late. I can't say enough positive things about Zoe. I mean, look, I'm just excited when we get him out there going full speed again. Take two Joe, more. Do you mind, are you comfortable with depth and numbers that you have now? Look, it's our job to go ahead and develop everybody on the roster. And right now, the group of guys we're working with, we see daily improvement. we got to keep on pushing them forward. In terms of when we get closer to the season, there's going to be a lot of things that go ahead between now and then that change. We're still, you know, at this point, I wouldn't say we're early in camp, but we're kind of phasing that kind of midpoint right there. We're going to transition, Kim. Uh, in terms of my focus is on how they improve every day and making sure we're put in the right position to be successful. You need to, you need to see those guys in more game action, maybe. It's a, in regards to the, you know, the guys that start out and the first teamers? We got to see all of our players in more game action. I mean, that's a universal statement, Jordan, in terms of everyone out there. We've but practiced. You're not playing Daniel, I'm really trying to, you plan on playing the offensive line? We haven't decided that yet. We haven't decided that yet, Jordan. So I don't want to give an answer one way or another. There's a lot of meetings we still have to have and talk through individual players. We're going to go ahead and talk to our players later on when we make that decision. But that won't be made anytime within the next hour or so. Joe, last one. Joe, is uh, Odigan Bo uh, dealing with something, or was he like more of a maintenance day yesterday? And what have you seen from him? Uh, Fadi had Fadi had something. It was a, it was a non-football issue. Um, he's back in the building working with us today. He'll be at the walkthrough today, so what, he's good to go. Have you seen from him on the field? It seems like he might have some stand-up, hand-down versatility for you guys. He does. I mean, sub-pass rusher. He, he's a high-motor guy. He's got some good speed to power. His ability to get an edge on a tackle and really dip and crank and turn that edge right there and make a play. But definitely a guy who goes 100% all the time.